Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise to support uh, this bill, the County Allocation of Revenue Bill, Senate Bill 30 of 2021. Mr. Speaker, let me begin by thanking the committee for carrying out a very good job in ensuring that our counties receive money. And one of the things that really impresses me this year and that I'm very grateful is that the CARA does not include conditional grants. Conditional grants, as you will see, Mr. Speaker, in the submission by the, control, the Commission of Revenue Allocation was being used to appear as if counties were receiving money. Mr. Speaker, during the debate on revenue formula, we all argued because Treasury was coming up with figures and Treasury was very clear in saying, we do not have this money. I find it a little bit uh, ludicrous that we are pushing Treasury so much to send money to counties. We increase a lot of revenue allocation to counties, yet counties until today have not been able to receive that money. Mr. Speaker, I don't know what we're going to do to ensure that at least these counties have their money. When I was reading through this report, which is a very good report that has been prepared, you know, and also with the input of county assemblies, I find it very difficult to understand where Treasury is going to get all this money, which is being asked to ensure that they released on time without money being collected by the Kenya Revenue. Mr. Speaker, one of the biggest challenges that I've always had, and I've always concurred with Treasury on this matter, is on the issue of pending bills. There is absolutely no reason as to why counties should have pending bills. But when you look at the submission by the uh, uh, Commission of Revenue Allocation, they indicate that counties have a lot of pending bills. So if you've budgeted and you've received the allocation, why not spend within your means? So, Mr. Speaker, I, I was expecting that the committee, in their recommendation, would be a little bit tougher when it comes to the issues of county spending money that they do not have. I've seen one of the recommendations by the committee here that suggests that if any money remains unspent, it should be sent to the counties so that they can be able to budget it for the next financial year. If that is the case, Mr. Speaker, then of course we'll continue accumulating on pending bills. I think a proposal should be that before any money is released by Treasury, counties should have ensured that they do not have any pending bills. It's a big challenge, Mr. Speaker, because a lot of this money which Treasury says that counties have is really money on paper and their commitments, but I think we need to look at all that issue. Currently, Mr. Speaker, one of the big challenges which will continue affecting counties and counties' assembly is the issue of remittance. Yeah, yes, I would love to be... Yeah, yes, please. Uh, it is good because we are House of record. We are not saying that the money that remains uh, is taken to the counties that is not budgeted. The issue here is when the county assemblies budget and the money is not dispersed on time, like for instance we are in June, the money that was meant for the county assemblies and it is not dispersed will ordinarily get lost, will not be used by the county assemblies, will be used by the executive. That is the mischief that we want to cure when we are recommending that. Thank you, Senator Aulokina. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, I thank the chair for clarifying that point. And that, if the case is that, then I think the committee should have been a bit more firm in ensuring that, that these county assemblies have the autonomous. And I think nothing stopped the committee from bringing an amendment to the Constitution, which does not require a referendum, to amend that so that it gives the county assembly the autonomous. It is very difficult for county assemblies to oversight on the county executive when they know that they have to rely on the county executive for them to be able to receive their money. We had instances of counties. I think Machakos was one of them. You know, there is also McQueen who was another, uh, another county where the executive completely refused to release money to the county assemblies. 
So how do you expect them to be uh, oversighted? Mr. Speaker, before uh, the point was clarified, I was driving the point on the issue of remittance. Why is it that, Mr. Speaker, money is deducted from salaries of county assembly staff, of the NCAs, of the secretariat, yet that money is not forwarded to the pension funds? Mr. Speaker, if we are not able to, you know, to send the money to the pension fund, we should not pretend that we are deducting that money from them. The big problem we have is that you will see in all these retirement uh, funds, every year they continue accumulating penalties and interest, and this is a big liability to the counties. So, Mr. Speaker, is this House is pushing for this revenue to go to the county government? I think we, it's about time that we become realistic. The first thing we must ask ourselves is this. If it is indeed true that any money which is not spent by the county assemblies is now spent by the executive in the next financial year, well, then why should we have pending bills in the first place? I think, Mr. Speaker, one of the amendments which I would propose to the committee to consider, including in the CARA, for 2021-2022 is that any money which is not spent by the assembly that had been budgeted for but has not been spent either because the money has not been released by the executive or the money has not been um, sent by treasury to be used to offset their existing pending bills and that their budget remains their budget because it is true i've met so many speakers who have lamented and say that the executive is not releasing money to them so the only way for us to cure is through making, making sure that it is in this act of parliament. Otherwise, you know, we can be saying that, and if it's not reduced on paper, there's no way that the executive in those, counties, in those county governments will comply. They will just be, you know, they'll get the money at the end of the year. If Treasury does not release money for the executive and it released all the money for the assembly, they will proceed and use that money to offset their own uh, uh, budgets. So, Mr. Speaker, these concerns should not just be concerns that will be carried forward. We must have solutions now. We must ask ourselves tough questions. If indeed we do not have money, and we passed money to be sent to counties in this, in this house, this CARA is now dividing 370 billion. You know, it might be very good with the name 370 billion. But in reality, if the government is not able to raise that money, what do we do? You know, of course, there's nothing we can do right now. We are barred by our own Senate resolution, which is entrenched in the Constitution. But I think to be realistic, we have to become more creative. I would have hoped to see more recommendations on how counties can continue collecting more on source revenue to be able to at least increase their own source revenue. So that in the event that the shareable revenue is not dispensed on time, they can continue paying their salaries. Mr. Speaker, it is sad when you hear that a lot of staff in the county governments have not received their salaries. You know, I know it happens to us as well. It happened to even our staff. But we must have solutions to these problems. We cannot be raising them out as if they are concerns, and we don't. Mr. Speaker, this issue of remittance is something that bothers me a lot. And I think it's about time that, you know, one arm of government talks to another arm of government. Because it also affects us in this office, as senators. If we do not remit the KRA, or our predecessors did not remit the KRA, you know, remittance, we end up, we end, end up collecting more penalties and interest. I think now, since we are having a challenge sending money to counties, we then need to amend the Income Tax Act, we need to amend the PFM Act, such that there should be no more penalties that will accrue on money that has not been remitted uh, by the county assemblies. Because it is not, I would hope, it is not just with their own desire not to remit money, it is because they have not received any money from Treasury. So, Mr. Speaker, this deduction end up being good on paper but it affects people when they retire. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the ceiling of these county assemblies, for the last two financial years, they have remained constant. 
nothing has increased. So there's no way you're going to tell me that if there's any annual increment in terms of uh, salaries, it will be affected. There's no money. And to make it even worse, once people retire, I could see that moratorium of three years, which now the committee is recommending for another two-year term. What happens? You know, even if we go for the next two years and finally we're able to rationalize the staff and the, the staff of the county assembly retire, and then they go home, and that county assembly did not remit their deductions, what do you expect them to go and survive on? They will not be able to get their gratuity. They will not be able to get their retirement benefit. So we'll just be going around in circles. They'll be going from Narok, Narok to Nairobi, from Nakuru, from Kerenyaga all the way to Nairobi, chasing these retirement funds to see whether they can get their money. And they'll be told, go back to your county, they never send their money. So I think it's about time that we become realistic. And I hope that uh, my good friend, Senator Kibiro, who is quite diligent on this matter, can really hold the bull by its horn, follow through, you know, ensure that whatever has been deducted is remitted. If it is not limited, let them stop any further development in the county assemblies. We don't have any development fund in this uh, Senate. We sit here. Let them sit in the assemblies which are there, or even sit under the, the tree, so that they ensure that all the money they get, if it goes to, to be able to offset this uh, deficit in the retirement benefits, they do so. So, Mr. Speaker, one of the reasons why I sat here up to this time around 7.15 is because I want to see that money goes to the people of Narok. I want to see that at least this uh, CARA is passed and counties be able to collect the money. Because every single day when we meet governors in our committees, they say we have not received money. It is really, really tough. Please talk on our behalf. Please fight for us. This House under Article 96 of the Constitution, mandate is to defend the interest of the counties and their governments. We are doing that today. And I'm, I, you know, I know it's during Corona, but I would hope that at least we will not only be about how many members? Six members here pushing for this money to go to counties. So really, I think uh, even people in Kenya should be looking to see what their senators there. For, for them to, you know, to pass this uh, legislation, for them to get money. So, Mr. Speaker, um, as I end, I'm happy that finally uh, there'll be amendments made, and I hope that eventually the biggest amendment which will be able to help county assemblies, if, if is when they become autonomous, when they have their money and they are able to spend it the way they want it, and they will not be at the mercy of the executive for them to be able to carry out their functions. You know, it is important to train these people, Mr. Speaker. When uh, the county assemblies appear before our committees, you know, some of them have no clue, even on basic accounting skills. And I've seen here that among the monies, they, you know, when you look at the breakdown of the funds uh, which are being sent to the county assemblies, there's an 11 million figure which is supposed to be for internal audit. There is about, there is about 635 million shillings for training. And there's about 8.3 billion for operational expenses, which is divided among the 47 county assemblies. But if the money doesn't go there, do you honestly think that if, we are not, if the county assemblies are not receiving their money, do you honestly think they will prioritize training of their staff? Do you honestly think that they will be able to allocate any money for audit committees? They will not. In fact, most of them will be making sure that they get their salaries. Now they're not even getting their salaries. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope that this House can put its foot on the ground to ensure that we protect devolution. There's no point of us clapping our hands on a daily basis and saying that the national government is doing very good. There are projects being launched on a daily basis. You know, yet our own county assemblies, our own county executives, the county governments whom we represent here are not getting the money to be able to carry out small developments. Mr. Speaker, finally, most people believe that the national government is the one that does all the work. 
I remember even this year in Kisumu with the Madraka Day celebration, there were so many programs, you know, projects being launched. You know, the event went very well because it was funded by the national government. They have all the money. Suppose one day they just say, no, you know, we want to be able to go to Narrow County and everything there is funded by the Narrow County government. Or we go to Samburu County and everything is funded by Samburu County. You know, my dear sister spoke about the idiom of, uh, you know, of uh, form follows functions. You know, where money is supposed to follow the functions. There's no point of devolving functions and you don't send the money. And even whatever money which has been passed by this house to be shared equitably among as the 47 counties, you do not get them, you will never run away from the issue of pending bills. We will continue getting pending bills. The current figure, I think, of about uh, 26 billion to the county pension funds, 14 billion to the local authorities pension fund, you know, we'll continue accumulating, leave alone, the money which is owed to contractors and to the youth who you say you defend for small projects that they do and they don't get paid. People will continue committing suicide. Mr. Speaker, I support.